Welcome to our firmware flashing tutorial. If you own some of our more recent modules, you may have noticed a small backpack on the back of your module. This is called a daisy seed. And if you're interested, we've linked it down below in the description if you want to learn more. It's an amazing platform and we just love it. Though this one here is in its most recent form, the daisy seed on your module may look a little different. There's three variations of the seed that are in circulation today on qubit modules. It's important to note that all three of these variations function in the exact same way. They're just shaped a little differently. So today we're gonna to go through the process of updating firmware with seed powered qubit modules. Before we begin the update process, you'll need four things to perform the update. Your module, Eurorack power, a micro USB cable, and a computer with a Chrome browser. Once you have all four items ready, we can start updating your module. If you'd like to pause the video, I'll wait right here for you. Before we connect the module for updating, let's go get our firmware. You can find the most current firmware for your Qubit module on their respective product page. So today we're updating Databender. You'll see the download link for the firmware file just below the description. Click the link and a zip file will download from your browser. The zip file isn't the firmware file, so we're gonna unzip that file and you'll find a few files inside. The .bin file is the firmware, and we're gonna use that with the web programmer in just a second. The readme how to flash PDF is a written instruction of what we're doing right now, so if you're watching this video, you won't need that. If your firmware is an update, a change log is included showing what's new in the update. And if your file is a release firmware, it will likely not have a change log included. Now that we have the firmware file ready to go, let's open up the DAISY web programmer. And here's where you wanna make sure that you're using Google Chrome. The web programmer tool needs that. You'll find a link to the web programmer tool below in the description and also in the PDF, which your firmware came with. The web programmer is how we flash the firmware from the computer to the module. First, make sure your module is being powered by Eurorack power. Then we'll flip over the module. On the Daisy Seed, you'll notice two white buttons. One's labeled Boot and the other Reset. To set your module to flashable mode, first let's plug the micro USB cable coming from the computer to the module. In the Daisy Web Programmer, click the Connect button at the top of the window. A small pop-up window will open showing all your connected devices. Now we'll do the connection command on the Seed. Hold down the boot button, and while holding boot down, press the reset button. Once you're done pressing reset, you can release boot. Another method to connect is to hold boot down while plugging in your micro USB cable into the seed. But if that doesn't work, the previous command works just fine. If you need to troubleshoot your connection, make sure to try different USB cables and USB ports to rule out any external issues. For those using a Windows computer, you may need to reset your computer's USB drivers to the correct setting to work with DAISY. And luckily, we can use a program called Zadig to achieve this. If you're not using a Windows computer, feel free to skip to the next section. Let's begin by downloading Zadig. You can find the link below. Make sure you download and install the latest version. So after we have Zadig downloaded and open, we're gonna set our DAISY to bootloader mode by holding down boot and pressing reset, just like we did earlier. In the top left menus, we're gonna click on options and we'll start by hitting list all devices. This lets Zadig see our DAISY and its optional drivers. So now we'll click on this bar right here and we're gonna choose DFU in FS mode. I've already replaced the driver for Daisy on this computer, so yours could be blank or filled in, but the game here is to get it set to win USB. And yours will say install here. So you'll click through these options here until you find win USB, which mine was defaulted to. And then you would hit install driver right here. Zadig will now reset and update your drivers so that your computer knows what driver to use to flash firmware with Daisy. Once the update is complete, 
let's jump back into the web programmer and continue our update. When your module connects, you'll see a new device pop up in the connect window called DFU in FS mode, right here. This is your module, so select it and hit enter. Your module is now connected to the web programmer. All right, so let's place the .bin file we downloaded into the web programmer. You can either click and drag the file onto the window, like this, or you can click the Choose File button and browse to the .bin file from there. With the module connected and the file in place, the Program button now is illuminated, and we're ready to upload the new firmware to the module. So press Program, and the web programmer begins to do its thing. As you can see, the process only takes a moment, and you'll see the notification when it's done. And that's all there is to it. Your module is now updated. It's okay to just unplug the module without any sort of eject function. The module will now be operating on the most current firmware, but let's power it down just to confirm that it's successfully updated by checking the firmware confirmation LEDs at boot up. You don't need to reboot your module to use it right now, but if you'd like to confirm that you're on the correct firmware, you can reboot it to perform a quick firmware check. To confirm that your module is properly updated, take note of the boot up LED sequence on your module. For DataBender, you'll know you're on the release firmware if your LED shows this color combo. But future firmware updates will have a different color scheme, and you can find the appropriate firmware color schemes for DataBender as well as other DAISY powered modules in their respective manuals. For Qubit modules that carry a USB drive on the front panel like Aurora and Nebulae, you can flash the firmware without having to take the module out of the rack. Just drop the file on the USB drive and boot your module. And there we have it. We've successfully updated our Qubit module. We'll be releasing updates in the future, so you can always use this video as a reference guide. Thanks for watching. Yeah.